Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to be talking about the autofocus settings that I use for sports photography on the Canon R6. So let's hop on in. So under the menu system, you got autofocus. It'll start here on the camera. You go to autofocus touchscreen on the Canon R6, which is hugely beneficial um, if you wanna be quick, but you know, you can also use all of your dials to get to the things that you need to get to. So make sure you have subject to detect set to people. Um, I haven't used the other ones, but if you're shooting sports, you're shooting people. So that comes in very, very handy. The autofocus on the new mirrorless cameras are really, really good. And then I use servo AF that allows it to constantly focus when you are half pressing the shutter. That way it's always adjusting for the athlete that is either running towards you away, you know, side to side, wherever he's going, she's going, it's gonna continuously autofocus as long as you're half pressing the shutter button. So now autofocus method, I change this pretty often during football games and volleyball because I'm still trying to figure out which one works best for me. But typically I will start with the face tracking if I um, know that I'm not gonna have any issues with it hunting or missing focus. Um, typically that comes in really handy in track and any sports that don't have a face mask. So anything but football, typically I'm on the face detection. Now with football, I'm usually at 1.8 AF. That is a pretty solid autofocus that I've always used even before the mirrorless and it's always worked well for me. So I usually stick to that. And then also I use the expand AF if I feel like it's having a little issue, if it's a little darker out, I don't know if it actually helps at all in lower light, but I find that I'd miss a lot less shots when I'm using this autofocus mode when it's dimly lit. Now, there are a few others that I do use in baseball. Now I use this one, the large zone AF horizontal for pitching. When I am shooting from the side of the pitcher's mound, I can use this autofocus setting. And as you can see, the boxes stretch the middle of the frame from left to right. And that allows me to start the pitcher on the left side of the frame here and not have to move the camera for when he lunges forward and pitches or she in softball lunges from the left to the right or if I'm on the other side, I could put them on the right to the left. It allows it to stay in focus the whole time. And then you can get creative in Photoshop and create a series um, of images all kind of put together from that burst. Um, so that's one that I use often in baseball and softball. I haven't messed with um, the vertical at all. Typically um, I'm shooting more horizontals, so I'm not typically going to vertical and I can't really think of where that might come in handy but now that i'm looking at it where it might come in handy and where i will be trying it is um long jump when they're running towards me that way when they jump up it'll stay focusing and then when they come down so um, that would probably come in very handy and i've never really thought of that so now like i said subject to detect i have set to people continuous af make sure you have that one turned off this one will constantly keep your camera searching for a, something to focus on. Even if you're not even holding the shutter button halfway down, it'll just continuously um, search for something to lock onto, which will drain your battery. Movie Servo AF, this comes in uh, for video. I have it turned on because I like to have that constant um, focus when somebody's moving or running. If I do a little bit of video at a sporting event, mostly weddings. Touch and drag settings, I don't get into. I've never touched them, so it's gonna be set to disabled. Um, not really exactly um, sure if that really comes in handy in sports at all. Um, it's something I haven't really looked into, but maybe in the future I will look into. So now let's go over to two. This is gonna have your manual focus settings, um, your focus guide and AF assist beam firing. I have this on, but I think it was automatically on when I got the camera. So I'm not really sure if it's going to help you in sports at all. And I'm not really sure if it's that beneficial um, in the daylight. It might be more of a nighttime thing, 
where it's really dark, it might help you hit the autofocus if it's pretty dark out. Manual focus settings, I have it turned on. This comes in handy if you put the camera in manual focus mode. You will get highlights around your subjects. And so you can see what's in focus because it'll have like a, a red because I have it set to red. You'll see a red outline around your subject. So that comes in handy if you're doing anything manual focus. So now over on three, you have your servo AF cases, one, two, three, and four, and then auto. This is one that I have been working with a lot lately, trying to figure out what works best for me. Lately, I have found that four works best for me, and then the settings are just zeroed out right in the middle. You can adjust these for responsiveness or locked on. Um, I just keep in the middle. As you can see, if you change them, each one will have different settings and they're all different. Versatile, multi-purpose, continue track to uh, track subjects, ignoring possible obstacles. That might come in handy when, um, if you're shooting a quarterback and somebody runs in front, if you're locked on the quarterback, it will stay there. Any sport, um, it will ignore anything that comes into the frame. I've been using four for a few weeks and I've found that it works perfectly fine for me. My uh, autofocus has been hitting perfectly fine with it. So, so far I've been sticking with case four. All right, so we're gonna jump over to slide four now under the autofocus settings. Um, lens, electronic manual focus. Never mess with these settings. They are still at factory. Not really sure what these settings are for, so I'm kinda just go through them. One shot AF release prior. Switch tracking, track subjects set to one. Looks like you can uh, switch subject or initial priority or on the subject. Lens drive when autofocus is impossible. I have that on, stop focus search off. I'm not really sure about any of these settings, so I'm just kind of going through them so you can see what this slide has. Limit AF methods, it looks like you could probably go in here and unselect some of these so they're not in the menu system. Um, that way you're not accidentally getting to a autofocus mode that you don't want to use. AF method selection control. It looks like you can switch what buttons these are selected on. This one's set to the manual focus button on the body. Orientation linked autofocus points. Same for both vertical and horizontal. You can switch it that way if you turn your camera, the autofocus points change according to the orientation of the camera. And then over here on slide five, Initial servo AF point for face detection. You can change that to auto, single point, and face detection. I'm not really sure what these settings are for. A lot of these settings I don't get into, one, two, and three are the slides that I get into the most. So you got ring, uh, focus ring rotation. You can change um, what way the auto focus, so you can reverse it or make it normal. Um, that way, if you are used to a lens where you are going to infinity, going to the right, and the camera has it set to the left, you could reverse that and have it the way that you're used to with other lenses. RF lens manual focus ring sensitivity. You can adjust how fast it gets from um, minimal to infinity um, by adjusting that. Sensitivity, AF point select. Not really sure what that one is. It's set to zero. I'm sure that's factory since I've never touched it. Electronic full-time manual focus. If you turn this on, anytime you touch your focus ring and turn it, it's gonna it's gonna stop the autofocus and it's going to allow you to adjust it with the manual focus. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, that's another setting that obviously it's off. I've never used it. Um, there's a lot of things that I have to get into with the RF glass. I just got my first RF glasses not too long ago, so I haven't got into a lot of the settings on that, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot of RF capabilities on the new mirrorless systems, and I'm gonna be jumping into those hopefully soon and using the control rings on the lenses to really um, kind of hone in my workflow. So with that all said, most of the settings that you're gonna need are for photo are gonna be under one and three, or at least the ones that I use the most. The other ones are gonna have manual focus and some video stuff, and then a little bit of uh, RF glass controls that you can um, use the lens to control um, other things. 
So with that said, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. I'd appreciate it if you would like to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.